To catch everyone's attention, Lloyd stood on top of the mansion in front of a crowd of workers. He shouted, telling them he knew it would be hard to believe, but he declared that he could stop time. He proclaimed to everyone that he would stop time for one year for the sake of the construction. Naturally, it seemed impossible for someone to stop time, so the crowd appeared confused by what their master was saying. Lloyd scratched the back of his head, thinking they weren't buying what he was claiming. Still, Lloyd was sure they were all surprised by his sudden announcement that he could stop time. Then, a notification popped up, stating that the title's linked effect, Absolute Trust, was taking place. Suddenly, the former White Lancer head, Valilady Blank, shouted while crying, as though he were praising a god. Valilady shouted to everyone that whatever Lloyd said goes. This white lancer was more loyal than your girlfriend. Other people also began shouting that whatever Lloyd said goes. One of the workers shouted that Lloyd could summon monsters. Then they started chanting again, whatever Lloyd says goes. Another shouted that Lloyd could even control a bone dragon. The crowd chanted once again, praising Lloyd. Javier just watched these poor fanatics, but who wouldn't go crazy for Lloyd when even demons were obsessed with his face and voice. The fanatics had gone wild, shouting that they would do whatever Lloyd said. Even Lloyd had gone crazy, raising his arms to boost their morale. Javier, on the other hand, looked at Lloyd and the people, wondering in his mind if the villagers were still sane. A window notification popped up, saying that Lloyd had consumed 3,000 RP to freeze time. The entire estate was surrounded by a large sphere, and time outside was frozen. Then, Lloyd's heart began to freeze after using the time freeze skill. He clutched his chest due to the pain, and his breath turned cold. Javier asked his master if he was alright. Lloyd replied, saying he wasn't but smiled crazily, claiming he was just too excited at the thought of building the truth jewel. Many formulas appeared in his mind formulas belonging to the smartest engineer, Lloyd Frontera. Despite his lack of extensive knowledge, Lloyd revised the design using his simulation skill and eventually completed the perfect blueprint. He planned to create pathways to remove water from the area where the truth jewel would be, then begin the dam's construction. Lloyd knew they were limited by the technology of the time, so he planned to use Spain's Taibai Dam as a model. It is a legendary dam built in the Middle Ages that still functioned. Lloyd was thinking that, simultaneously with building the dam, they would also construct the Truth Jewel, which was the most important part. He smiled at the thought, feeling they were progressing by leaps and bounds. What made him happiest was thinking that soon he would be rewarded for all the hard work he had put in. Then, a voice could be heard in his head, sounding like someone testing a microphone. The voice called Lloyd ugly and terrible at singing, asking if Lloyd could hear him. Hearing this, Lloyd thought the voice sounded familiar, it was the voice of the Dragon King. Verkus said it was indeed him speaking to Lloyd and told him to come quickly, stating that what he had to say was a super emergency. Verkus warned Lloyd that he might not be able to complete the truth jewel. This alarmed Lloyd, and he ran so fast he could outrun the Flash as he rushed to the Dragon King. Javier simply watched his master sprinting away. Lloyd, panting heavily, eventually slowed as he approached the lazy Dragon King, who was lounging on a sofa. Verkis told Lloyd that his neck was stiff and asked for a massage. Still breathing heavily, Lloyd, serious now, asked the Dragon King what he had meant about the emergency preventing the Truth Jewel from being built. Verkis replied that his stiff neck was the emergency. He warned Lloyd that if he didn't get a massage, he might get really angry and destroy everything. Hearing this, Lloyd's veins bulged in frustration. He had thought it was a real emergency, only to find it was a lazy dragon's stiff neck. Lloyd cursed the dragon in his mind and was on the verge of going Super Saiyan as his hands began to glow with mana. He wanted to beat the lazy Dragon King through the massage. Lloyd asked Verkis if his neck was really stiff, to which Verkis replied that it was in pain and needed a quick massage. Lloyd's face twisted into a level 999 mythical glory rank of ugliness that could even rival the faces of demons in hell. Pouring more mana into his hands, Lloyd planned to massage the Dragon King so intensely that Verkis would scream in pain. The mana in Lloyd's body condensed as he poured it all into his hands. Lloyd became the incarnation of the Demon King, his face crazed with fury. He clenched his hand and gripped the back of Verkis's neck, thinking, how dare this lizard play tricks when I'm so busy? 
He pushed with every ounce of strength, mentally shouting, die, while his face burned with the desire to blow the Dragon King into pieces. Yet, despite all his efforts, the Dragon King didn't feel a thing. Verkis asked what Lloyd was doing, wondering why he wasn't putting in enough strength. This made Lloyd even angrier as the veins on his face grew larger. He thought to himself that, after all, the Dragon King was still a dragon which is why Verkis didn't feel much. Lloyd decided it was all right to go all out now. In his mind, he would become a monster, devouring the screams of others like food. He intended to have a feast by making the lizard scream. Lloyd went crazy, putting everything into the massage, pushing again and again while clenching his fists. He even shouted as he massaged the lazy Dragon King. But the Dragon King remained unfazed, telling Lloyd that his efforts were weak and that he was disappointed in him. Lloyd's face transformed into another meme-worthy expression as he ground his teeth out of frustration. He wanted to beat this lizard thinking that the Dragon King was driving him insane. Lloyd wanted to tell Verkis that he was the first person to ever annoy him this much. Then, a window popped up, stating that Lloyd had gained a new skill. This caught Lloyd's attention, thinking it might be something that could help him beat the Dragon King. But the new skill was titled Absolute Ugly Man. The system told Lloyd that he was now a being of unbelievable ugliness, regardless of whether he was angry or crying. It informed him that anyone who saw his face would exclaim, Oh man, what the hell is that ugly face? Lloyd, shocked, asked the system what kind of skill this was, reminding it that he was considered handsome before he came to this world. The system agreed that Lloyd's face, back when he was in Seoul as Kim Suho, was indeed what Lloyd claimed. But the system added, so what though? Right now, you look like poop in this world. Lloyd, still in Super Saiyan mode while massaging the lazy Dragon King, was interrupted when Verkis called him. Lloyd asked what it was, and Verkis inquired, hypothetically, if they were to change fate with the Truth Jewel, what would Lloyd do afterward? Lloyd was still wiggling his hand while putting every strength in pushing the neck of the lazy dragon. Lloyd, who was confused, repeats the Dragon King's question to clarify. The Dragon King tells Lloyd that he is asking about what he will do with the Truth Jewel. Lloyd asks for pardon because it seems the question didn't sink into his mind. Then Lloyd says that there is one course he will take, he will destroy the Truth Jewel after using it. This catches the Dragon King's attention as he looks back at Lloyd. Lloyd's face was like someone who is about to poop while he is putting a lot of strength into the Dragon King's neck. He tells the Dragon King that having something like the Truth Jewel would bring nothing but headaches, and it would only get in the way of his life of fun and rest. As the system predicted, the Dragon King, looking at Lloyd's face, says, Oh man, what an ugly face. After Lloyd hears this, he thinks his face looks like that because of this damn dragon. Hearing what Lloyd said makes Verkis smile. He feels at peace, thinking that it seems the Truth Jewel won't be used for evil purposes. Verkis looks at Lloyd as someone like him, someone who truly dreams of doing nothing. The Dragon King tells Lloyd that it is fine now and that he can leave. Lloyd replies, asking him what he means because he is not done yet. But actually, what Lloyd meant when he said he was not done yet is that he was not finished hearing the scream of this Dragon King. The system pops up, telling Lloyd that he has pushed the function of his mana heart to the limit. Lloyd, who is annoyed at the dragon, starts to get more annoyed. He tells the system to stop it, then asks the system what it is trying to do again. The system says that his mana heart skill has increased in level and that he has already become an advanced sword expert level 1. Lloyd is confused about what this expert means. Then a notification appears saying that Lloyd receives a passive option, which is the sword master syndrome. Now all of his senses have become greatly enhanced. The Dragon King, Verkis, notices that Lloyd is acting strange. So Verkis asks Lloyd what is wrong and if he is okay. But what Verkis says multiplies from what Lloyd hears. It continuously repeats again and again, entering his ears. At the same time, the question starts to feel so strong as it enters his ears, like his ears are about to burst from the loudness. Lloyd bends his knees because of it, and he closes his ears with his hands. He shouts that his ears are hurting. Verkis asks him if there is earwax stuck in his ears. Lloyd, still shouting, says it's not that, but Swordmaster Syndrome. Verkis says he is amazed and congratulates Lloyd, saying that it's nice. This makes Lloyd even crazier as the sound vibrates through his ears. 
As Lloyd leaves the area, walking in the hallway of the estate, he is still covering his ears, but the noises of animals can be heard by him clearly, from the chirping of birds, the oinking of pigs, and even the rustling of the wind. Lloyd curses, thinking he has so much to do for the construction, which is why he doesn't care whether he becomes a swordmaster or not. Lloyd wonders if he should just use RP to level up his mana heart. But he stops himself, thinking that if he does that, he might not have RP to stop fate. Then Javier appears and calls out to his master, Lloyd. Javier asks if he is experiencing Sword Master Syndrome. This question makes Lloyd shout, as those noises are like screams in his ears. This guy has gone crazy with this syndrome, but his ears didn't break when he was singing. Lloyd looks back and raises his hand, telling Javier to be quiet. He tells Javier not to talk to him. Javier is just silent, looking at him, but this time, Javier is so happy, maybe thinking it's time now to take revenge on this crazy master who orders him around so much while being underpaid. Javier wants to explain it in detail. He clenches his fist, excited. Javier says that Lloyd needs to throw himself into silence. He needs to face the extremely sharp and sensitive senses and focus on them. Javier adds that his master needs to pull them close and embrace them until he achieves true silence. But that advice makes Lloyd's ears start bleeding because of the sound vibrations. Lloyd ends up on the ground, covering his ears. Javier doesn't worry about his master and instead just looks at him. Then he starts teasing his master, laughing at him while pointing his finger at Lloyd. He tells Lloyd that he can do it. Lloyd is angry and annoyed at this. He shouts at Javier, asking if that is the face he makes when he cheers someone on. He even tells Javier that he will kill him. But Lloyd notices something. As someone who became a swordmaster, he realizes that right now, he can see so clearly. He plans to look at Javier's face because, at this moment, he feels like he can see even the blemishes on Javier's face. But Javier poses like a handsome model. Lloyd shouts, questioning why Javier doesn't even have blemishes. Lloyd tells Javier that those poses irritate him so much, so he orders Javier to stop. Although Javier pranks Lloyd a lot, he stayed awake for a few nights since he had experienced it before and helped Lloyd get used to the new senses he has. Then, at the construction site, Lloyd looks stressed. A few months have already passed since. The construction of the dam and the truth jewel is almost complete. Then Javier appears behind Lloyd. He asks his master if he is alright and inquires about the Swordmaster Syndrome. He tells Lloyd that he seems pretty stable, even at the construction site. Lloyd is annoyed by what Javier is doing. Javier apologizes for speaking too loudly, saying he didn't do it on purpose, but on second thought, he guesses that this could be considered a type of training. Lloyd is angry, shouting at Javier to stop it. He asks Javier if he is enjoying this. Javier says he misunderstood and adds that he is really worried about him, but Javier's face is happy, not the face of someone who is worried. He is able to bully his master this time. Javier says he meant what he said. Lloyd just lets Javier be and says that he can see Javier sincerely having fun. Lloyd points his finger at Javier and warns him to wait, as he will show Javier just how terrifying an employer can be. While Lloyd is talking to Javier, a song can be heard in the area. A bright light appears with a song within it. Lloyd slowly looks back, asking what it is. He says he hears some kind of holy singing. Lloyd covers his eyes as the light is so bright. He is speechless because he can't see clearly. There is a person in the bright light that catches Lloyd's attention. It slowly descends and points to the center of the sun. It is an angel with wide wings and a bright light. Lloyd is alarmed, looking at it. The angel slowly says something. He tells Lloyd that it is nice to meet him. He introduces himself as Raphael, the Lower Realm Inspection Bureau Chairman and an Officer of the Heavenly Realm. He says he is there to tell Lloyd about an enforcement order. Lloyd starts questioning the angel in his mind. Lloyd feels something ominous. Then Gabriel suddenly moves his hand at a fast rate, opening the document that was sent by the Heavenly Realm. He starts reading the enforcement order, saying that the order is for the building owner, Lloyd Frontera. The order is to stop the construction of the illegal building, Aotearoa, and to destroy everything that has been built. 
Lloyd is speechless and alarmed by what he hears. He starts asking Gabriel what he said again. Now, will Lloyd be able to build the truth jewel and get the answer on how he can contradict fate? But I believe that Lloyd will become another model of the Archangel as he was even able to manipulate the demons in hell. Now going back to where it was, Raphael, who was flying and at the center of the sun, made everyone look at him. Workers stopped what they were doing, curious about who that figure above them was. Everyone from every department literally stopped what they were doing. This guy single-handedly halted construction. For every damn thing Lloyd creates, there is always a nuisance disrupting his work. Raphael told everyone that what he said represented the will of heaven. He announced that the construction of Aotearoa must be destroyed immediately. Lloyd told him to wait and asked Raphael what he was saying all of a sudden. Lloyd asked what this was and if Raphael was really an angel. Lloyd didn't want the construction to halt and even asked Raphael to provide proof that he was truly an angel. Raphael asked Lloyd if his name was Lloyd Frontera, and then asked again if Lloyd was still doubting him even after seeing his wings. Lloyd pointed at Javier, saying, This guy has wings too. Is he also an angel then? Raphael looked at Javier and told Lloyd that Javier does indeed have the face of an angel. Lloyd looked at Javier, who appeared somewhat proud, which made Lloyd even more annoyed. Lloyd asked Raphael, if that's the case, how can I trust that this is the will of heaven or whatever you're saying? He told Raphael that he had gone through so much to get Aotearoa constructed. Then Lloyd asked Raphael if he really expected them to just follow along and move on. Raphael didn't say anything, simply closing the book that contained the order of the heavens. Then he raised his hand like he was Thor or something. A bright light appeared in Raphael's hand as a large hammer formed within it. Not only that, but a light began forming near Raphael's head. It was a halo at the top of his head, proof that he was truly an angel. This alarmed Lloyd, making him sweat. Raphael was serious now, holding that large, bright hammer. He asked Lloyd if he believed him now. All the workers started to watch Raphael, who was displaying the radiant elegance of an angel. Byron exclaimed that it was the golden hammer of punishment, adding that it looked exactly as described in the holy book. Byron shouted to everyone that Raphael really was an angel. Not only did it look the same, but there was also a tag on it. Damn, this hammer seems like it was purchased at the heavenly department store. Raphael corrected them, saying it wasn't the golden hammer of punishment. The name of the hammer was the multi-purpose official business hammer. Alarmed, Lloyd said it was real, and the details were genuine. Lloyd asked Raphael why the Aotearoa was considered an illegal building, explaining that it wouldn't collapse easily and that they were the rightful owners of the land. Raphael told Lloyd that the truth was that Aotearoa was an abnormal artifact that even looked into the upper realm or realm higher than the heavenly one and leaked the secrets of heaven. He explained that on December 6th at 6 a.m. in the 307th year of the mythical calendar, the great race war occurred because everyone desired to obtain it. Raphael then detailed the casualties which shocked both Lloyd and Javier. He said that 4,370,000 beings died and 27,820,000 were injured, with total asset damage estimated to have risen to over 4 quadrillion, 72 trillion, 9 billion, 400 million gold. After closing the documents about Aotearoa, Raphael stated that due to these events, Aotearoa had been designated an illegal building. He added that if it wasn't destroyed immediately, he would personally see to its destruction. Lloyd, who had gone through so much trouble to collect the items and even traveled to other dimensions just to gather the materials, was furious at what he felt was an unjust decision. It was really unfair to our handsome MC. He told Raphael that it was a ridiculous order and outright tyranny. Lloyd said he wanted to file an objection and strongly opposed the decision. Raphael told him that objections were only accepted through prayers. He told Lloyd that if his prayer was fervent and pure, it would reach the civil complaints room. Lloyd was confused after hearing this and asked Raphael if such a system existed, adding that it sounded pretty good. Raphael confirmed that the heavenly realm is a friendly place, always looking to lessen the difficulties faced by the lower realm. Lloyd then dropped to his knees and began to pray seriously, wanting to take advantage of any chance he still had. This is what Lloyd prayed, God, I need to borrow the power of the Aotearoa to protect the people important to me. I don't want to lose anyone close to me ever again. Please heed the prayers of this pitiful sheep. All of the people gathered here are filled with beautiful memories and happiness. 
The angel listening to the prayer was initially amazed, praising Lloyd for his fervent prayer. But Lloyd didn't stop there. He added, everyone must stay well so I can enjoy my peaceful retirement. Hearing that last part shifted the angel's mood entirely. This lazy request for a comfortable retirement ruined any chance of building the Aotiro up peacefully. The angel slammed the phone of the heavenly realm, announcing that Lloyd's prayer was rejected. Raphael relayed the message, telling Lloyd that the angel said his prayer was denied. Lloyd, the god of shamelessness, asked why. How dare he ask for a reason when he ruined his own prayer? Raphael simply told Lloyd that his prayer wasn't pure and asked him to destroy the Aotearoa. Lloyd angrily retorted that he couldn't do something like that. Raphael, unfazed, replied that it was fine since he would do it himself. He raised the golden hammer and flew toward the building, preparing to smash it into pieces. As he neared the structure and was about to deliver the final blow, Lloyd shouted at Raphael to stop. But before Raphael could strike, something flew toward him, alarming the angel it was Javier, about to slash Raphael with his sword at full strength, however, the angel didn't flinch, swinging his hammer with equal power and slamming it toward the building. Before the hammer could land, Javier managed to block and parry the attack. The force of the clash was so immense that it created a massive shockwave, but Lloyd, of all people, was the one most affected. He screamed in pain, cursing the loud sound, blaming it on his stupid swordsman syndrome. Javier, still standing tall before a high-ranking angel, raised his sword and introduced himself. I am Javier Asrahan, a knight of Frontera County, he declared. He told Rafael that, as an intruder in their county, he needed to pack up and leave immediately. With a serious glare, Javier warned that if Rafael refused, he would execute him on the spot. Javier's threat wasn't empty, and even Rafael was visibly alarmed. As the two powerful beings prepared to clash once more, someone was running toward the scene at incredible speed. The newcomer saw the two winged figures about to face off it was Solitas, the young dragon. Alarmed by what he witnessed, Solitas remarked that he had come because he sensed an absurd amount of mana but hadn't expected to see an actual angel. He recalled how, when he was younger, his mother had told him stories about angels. As Solitas watched Raphael wielding the hammer, he understood that the angel was here to destroy everything, which enraged him. The thought of the worst-case scenario, where everything is obliterated, filled Solitas with anger. He thought to himself that if that happened, he wouldn't even get the chance to marry. Solitas had fallen for Lloyd's absurd scheme, believing that the mythical glory rank of the unattractive Lloyd could somehow help him find a wife, despite the fact that Lloyd himself couldn't. Lloyd only pulled off the queen because Queen Alicia seems to have a unique perception of love. Determined, Solitas thought that by teaming up with Javier, a grandmaster, he could drive Raphael away. However, before he could act, the lazy dragon King Verkis, who had been watching the scene unfold without intervening, called out to Solitas, startling the young dragon. Verkis warned him to stop whatever he was planning. Verkis explained that a clash between the heavenly realm, hell, and the dragons could lead to a great war that would obliterate the planet. He cautioned Solitas that as long as the intrusion remained at a smaller scale, like regional skirmishes, it was better to turn a blind eye to keep the world from descending into chaos. Confused, Solitas, seeing Verkis for the first time, asked who the Dragon King was. Meanwhile, workers in the area began to panic as the tension between Raphael and Javier grew. Lloyd ordered everyone to retreat as far as they could, sensing the danger that the situation posed. Raphael, refusing to back down, warned Javier, a grandmaster, to cease his resistance. He told Javier that if he didn't stand aside, he would be charged with obstructing heavenly duties. But Javier, having suffered through countless adventures retrieving precious materials and finding blueprints, was committed to defending the territory and its precious truth jewel. He told Raphael that they both were simply fulfilling their duties, and since neither would back down, there was no point in further discussion. Raphael initiated the attack, swinging his hammer with great force, but Javier skillfully evaded the blow, flying behind the angel to strike his blind spot. Lloyd, observing from afar, was amazed by Javier's skill and bravery, but doubt lingered in his mind could Javier really win? Javier launched a powerful downward strike at Raphael's back, but Raphael's halo moved on its own, protecting him by deflecting the attack. The clash between their powers created shockwaves, and once again, Lloyd, although uninvolved in the fight, was the one most affected by the aftermath. 
Javier, undeterred, shouted as he prepared to unleash an even stronger attack. With one swift strike, he generated thousands of slashes aimed at Raphael. But once again, the angel's halo effortlessly blocked every single one, leaving Javier alarmed at how futile his attacks were. Raphael, sensing victory, offered Javier one last chance to surrender, urging him to give up and abide by the laws of the heavenly realm. Suddenly, Lloyd, seeing Javier in a desperate situation, shouted, telling Javier that he would help. Confused but trusting, Javier heard Lloyd's command to cover his ears. The reason? Lloyd, the infamous greatest singer in hell, was about to unleash his most powerful vocal solo. If this guy joins the TikTok trend of perfect pitch, then he will become a legend. His perfect pitch rendition of Do Re Mi had the potential to not only stun the entire universe but also become a viral internet sensation if anyone had recorded it. Lloyd gathered enough air by inhaling all of it for his long concert to defeat the angel. Javier was sweating because he knew how destructive that voice was more destructive than an atomic bomb. But on the other hand, Raphael, who hadn't even heard Lloyd's heavenly voice, started to get confused about what this guy was planning to sing. Then Lloyd started singing. That voice was like the screeching of demons in hell, but this guy was actually singing O Sol Mio. But while singing, Lloyd felt something that made him stop. It was actually the sound of his voice. This is friendly fire. He was affected by his own deadly attack. Maybe this is the end of Lloyd's singing career era. Lloyd started falling to his knees, covering his ears and shouting because of the pain he felt when he heard that. Javier started to get alarmed, seeing that the main weapon didn't seem to work anymore. Lloyd became depressed after hearing his own voice due to the amplification of his hearing because of the Swordmaster's syndrome. Lloyd was thinking that all the sounds were amplified because of the syndrome he had, and he was thinking that his singing really sounded horrible. Javier was somewhat disappointed in Lloyd because he wasn't able to release that dragon's roar from his vocal cords. Raphael, who was able to hear the first note, started asking what that voice was. He was saying that it sounded like the scream of an ancient demon. But now that Raphael was distracted, Javier wanted to grab this opportunity to attack the angel. But even without Raphael's full attention, he was invulnerable to any kind of attack since there was a halo protecting him. Now it was time for the angel to release a counterattack. Raphael released a full swing from his hammer, but that didn't reach Javier, as the guy was able to evade it. Javier was shouting as he was about to release his full strength. He was thinking that he needed to go at top speed, and after using full speed, he planned to bypass the halo while finding an opening in it using his own speed. But Raphael released another swing and told Javier that what he was planning was all futile. Multiple attacks from all directions were released by Javier, but they somehow could not reach the angel. Raphael said that the halo of an angel is an absolute blessing. He told Javier that as long as he possessed a pure and righteous soul, the halo would protect him forever. But at one time, Javier was caught by the attack of the angel, as the angel was able to land a perfect hit on him. Although Javier was able to block that attack, he was pushed away, and his direction was toward the Truth Jewel. Javier was alarmed. He was thinking that falling on the Truth Jewel should not be happening because if he crashed into it at the speed he had, it would damage it. So he forced his wings to change direction so he could fly upward and avoid the Truth Jewel. But in that moment that Javier was thinking, the angel took that opportunity as he was able to place himself above Javier. Then he smashed Javier with his golden hammer, pushing the Grandmaster down. That attack made Javier land on top of the Truth Jewel and somewhat destroyed some parts of that godly building. Javier was coughing as if he had been hit by the strongest attack. I don't know if it was a strong attack because he is a Grand Master and only a small crack was made after he landed. After this guy's noble acting and storytelling in front of Lloyd's Frontera parents, I don't know if this guy is still doing what is the truth. Then the Archangel landed where Javier was lying down. He slowly looked at Javier's face, and he did not say anything about it. But even though Javier was beaten down, he was still handsome. And as he looked at Javier's face, it was angelic and seemed there was no threat since this guy was fully unconscious. Raphael fixed his glasses. He told Javier that if he stopped now, he would forgive him. He asked Javier to please stay down. 
Feeling that Javier was fully unconscious since this guy didn't even respond made him walk away to continue his mission to fully destroy the Truth Jewel. Javier peeked at Rafael, who was slowly walking away. But in that moment, Javier slowly stood up while staggering. Rafael noticed Javier and looked back at him at a faster speed. He shouted, telling Javier that he told him to stay down. But Javier, who was wearing a poker face, didn't care about this angel and threw sand at the angel's eyes. The one that protected the angel was his halo and his glasses. And he was even confused about what Javier was doing. But still, that sand started to enter the eyes of Rafael. And he was shouting from the pain in his eyes. He told Javier that he was a cowardly bastard. The halo detected what Raphael said, and it started beeping. It warned Raphael that what he said was a swear word, and a 10-point penalty was given to him. Raphael was quite alarmed by this situation, and he started shaking and sweating because of what happened. He said that a penalty had been placed upon the halo's function, and Javier, who had become like his master, smiled evilly after hearing that and was about to slash Raphael. He told Raphael that he was guessing that this angel was not so pure after all since he swore just now. Javier totally became like his master. Of course, the master was amazed by the character development of his disciple. He couldn't believe what happened to Javier when he was the culprit who made him like that. Lloyd started to question if Javier was always cool like that. Javier, with all his strength, released a strong downward slash toward Raphael. But still, since it was only deducted by 10 points, the halo of Raphael was still protecting him. But that halo was not invincible anymore, as it bent down from the strike of Javier, which made the angel alarmed. The bent halo hit the head of Raphael, making him shout from the pain. Javier released a slash, which Raphael avoided as he was about to release a counterattack. Raphael was about to smash Javier with his golden hammer, but Javier was able to avoid it and was then about to release another attack again. Lloyd was still covering his ears because the clangs of the sword and hammer from the clash created a strong sound, which was too much for him. He started to question if Javier and Raphael were on par now. And what Lloyd predicted was somewhat true, as they were really on par with each other now. All their attacks were being parried easily. But Lloyd was thinking that even if they were on par, it was still a problem. Javier was getting wounded from that exchange. Even though he was a grandmaster, an enemy who was on par with him was still a threat. The same went for Raphael, as he was able to receive some wounds from Javier's attack. Lloyd started closing his eyes. Maybe he didn't want to see Javier struggling too much in the battle of these two strong beings. There would be no clear victor if this continued. So, with all of his might, Lloyd shouted, telling both of them to stop. Raphael and Javier stopped fighting, looking at Lloyd. Lloyd, who was on his knees, started begging Raphael. He began crying, telling Raphael to please stop, asking him to stop hurting his friend anymore. I don't know if this guy was acting or not, but he seemed to think that Javier was really a friend of his in this world. Javier's eyes widened to see his master in a pitiful state, crying for him. But while Lloyd was crying, a window panel started to pop up. Maybe he was cooking up another crazy scheme, which we will know about later. Lloyd told him that he would follow as long as he could promise him one thing. Lloyd cried more and shouted because of grief. He told Raphael that if he didn't build the truth jewel to stop the restoration phenomenon of fate, then the county's people, who were more beautiful than anyone in the world, would become more miserable and sad. The people who had run away from these clashes started to hear the agony that Lloyd had been carrying the whole time. The people began to sadden as well, as they felt what their master was aiming for. It was for them. I don't know if this was really for them or for his lazy retirement life. The people started crying too as they felt the sincerity of their master. Lloyd said that he didn't care whatever happened to him and asked Javier just to make sure they lived happily. He told Raphael that he could even have his life if he wanted to. Raphael felt the sincerity in that speech from Lloyd, so he was silent for the meantime. But a mission was still a mission. Since it was an order from the heavenly realm, destroying it could only affect the small county and not the whole world. He told Lloyd that he apologized because there was no way for him to help him with that. Lloyd said that if that was the case, then he understood. He told Raphael that if that was the case, then it seemed their negotiations were now broken down. As Lloyd was actually begging, it literally touched the hearts of his people from what they heard, and Lloyd was just actually milking them with RP as his RP was increasing rapidly from it. 
Now, his total RP was 26,701. The system told him that he now had sufficient RP. The system asked if he would like to upgrade to a Swordmaster, which would cost 26,000 RP. Lloyd started wiping his tears. Maybe his drama was going to end right now. This bastard's face turned into an evil expression that could even scare the demons in hell. He told the system that he would upgrade to a full-fledged Swordmaster. Raphael was alarmed by it, seeing the bright light that appeared. Actually, this bastard's amount of mana plummeted up, and he was smiling like a demon. He could beat Shinra's smile with this. This bastard was the full incarnation of evil and the god of ugly faces. He smiled and laughed evilly as he told Raphael that he guessed it was time to sing right now. Now it is time for the Demon King, Lloyd Frontera, who is the best singer in hell, to have his greatest concert, and the one who will be the first to hear it is Raphael. Poor guy, this will be traumatic. 